news headlines for today, PNP YO Vice President has resigned. Clarendon fathers have been recognized for their roles in children's lives. And a woman who was on the streets for 15 years is now feeding the homeless. And we also look at another story featuring residents who are so overjoyed for the new road to bypass Gordon Town. One of the People's National Party's Youth Organization's Vice President has sent in her resignation. And she has said that one of the reasons for this is the infiltration of Mark Golden supporters. Miss Williams, who is Vice President of the People's National Party's Youth Organization, has resigned from her post. In a statement that was issued, Williams said that she finds it very difficult to serve the PNP with what appears to be an infiltration of the organization by Team Go With Golden. She further went on to state that currently there is no sense of unity and cynicism is at an all-time high. Our resignation will take effect as of December 31st. Comrades, please accept the letter of resignation effective December 31st, 2020. Despite the conclusion of the party's presidential elections, there appears to be an externally motivated effort being made to destroy the current structure of the organization, rather better what exists. As a result of this, there is no sense of unity and cynicism is at an all-time high. An organization cannot, of course, exist, much less prevail under those circumstances. If we are to be honest, we must admit that this organization has been in a bind for some time. It has lost its way and those of us who have committed our time and efforts to effecting change are being fought out rather than being supported. Our collective purpose, which is to effectively serve the young people of Jamaica, remains unfulfilled for reasons that are attributable solely to internal politics and personal agendas. Twice we have had to strike down the nomination of unqualified persons to leadership posts, not because the constitution is unclear, but because of an obsessive compulsion to create a cable of support for Comrade Golden. Typically, I would like to mention the deliberate attempts by unscrupulous members to destroy the sanctity of our elections as they fraudulently vote in the names of other comrades. It is obvious that we have forgotten those interests we are here to serve and it is for this reason that I find it most difficult to move forward. I thank Madam President for her continued dedication to excellence and purpose. I understand that she has an almost impossible task in front of her and will need the unwavering support of those similarly dedicated. If we believe we are the grouping of young persons best suited to convince this and the next generation by the People's National Party is worthy of leading this country, we have a lot of work to do. Best wishes in all your endeavors. Yours in comradeship, Miss D. Williams. In our second news story, fathers in Clarendon have been recognized for the critical roles that they have been playing in the lives of their children. Approximately 10 fathers from Clarendon were recently recognized by the Child Protection and Family Services Agency for their involvement in their children's lives. Antoinette Brooks, who is a team leader for that unit, has said that the decision was made to honor these men during parent month because the national focus was on fathers. So they wanted them to know that they are being seen and recognize their work. We see the effort that they are making and we want to encourage them to continue doing what they have been doing. I went on to state that the hope is that other fathers would follow their examples and see how important it is for fathers to be involved in the lives of their children and the critical role that they play on a day-to-day -day basis. Despite our Jamaican circumstances where you have mothers playing the double parent role, a mother really cannot take the place of a father. 
And so the fathers are very important in the lives of their children, whether or not they reside in the same home as their children. The fathers who were honored were from the different program areas within the agency, such as foster fathers, fathers of children who are or were in the child care facilities, and fathers who had taken on the role without the child's mother. The training included ones that they offer at the agency and is ongoing for their parents, who are so far these fathers, many of them would have been a part of our ongoing parental training programs, depending on their various situations and the reasons for their children having had to come to their attention in the first place. For those who are foster fathers, they would have gone through the foster parent training because they have a specific training that has to do with foster parenting before they can be approved. Now this is positive news and it should be applauded. Fathers being recognized for the work that they are doing with their children. A female who had spent three months on the harsh streets of Kingston at the age of 15 after her parents had told her that she was no longer welcome in their homes is now on a mission to feed the homeless. All of 23 years later, which seems to be many years and decades away from this serious situation that continue to pervade nations across the world. She has returned to run the streets. At one point, she slept under the bed of a former female schoolmate in West Kingston to avoid being detected by her friend's father. Passing any homeless individual is still very hard for her. She knows only too well what it is to fend off unwanted attention from predatory men in one breath and succumb in another to starve off starvation. Having been there, she knows as well the fact that being homeless does not always mean one is mentally ill. She also knows the issue of the circumstances that can result in persons having no haven but the one under the open skies. From her early years as an infant, to her adolescent years, this young lady has had a very dangerous and traumatic life. Of course, she had issues within her own family, with the spouse that her mother had chosen. She was very puzzled as to why no one linked the changes in her behavior to the early trauma that she experienced when they became aware. Very soon, she found herself bouncing between the homes of both parents before eventually being given the boot. Mother would send her from St. Mary to her father in St. Catherine for lunch money. One day, he told her that he had no money, so she said, if he doesn't give you any, don't come back. My stepmother said, well, you can't stay here either. My father was very quiet. He had nothing to say, and I was 15 years old, and I became homeless. I was now sleeping on the streets of Kingston, right in Hagley Park. I had a friend who was homeless, so it was the two of us sleeping on the streets. We were both 15 years old. Nobody showed any interest in why we were on the street. We became hungry, and after a while, we started having to do things in order to eat. And that was my introduction to this dangerous profession. I didn't know it was dangerous at the time, I just saw it as exchanging something to get something to eat, so that I could get somewhere to sleep, to shower, and so that I could stay off the streets for a few months, and it was really hard. She became a Christian, and she has been trying to find her purpose. It took some time to understand the direction that God wanted to take her in. But eventually, she found her way. And she ventures every month to feed the homeless on the streets. Her husband, of course, is a chef and he cooks and they package the food and take it into Kingston. And they share the meals with those on the streets. Of course, they are going through difficult times because her husband has lost his job as a result of the pandemic. But they are using their resources 
to help those on the streets. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Leave your feedback down below down below on the matters that have been discussed and in our final news story we will be looking at the residents of gordon town who are completely overjoyed at the new bypass road that they are in receipt of so that they can travel around gordon town residents in gordon town are extremely happy about the new bypass that will allow them to go around the community instead of traveling on the Gordon Town Road. Residents of Wilshire Mountain near Gordon Town in St. Andrew are elated that a proper road is finally being built in the community, while they are concerned about the alignment of the thoroughfare. Their concern is that the new road runs close to a burial area, and they said that the tombs could become exposed should there be another landslide in the community. Similarly to one which severely affected the Gordon Town Main Road during November's heavy rains, which would have made an alternative route quite necessary. To one resident, the sparsely populated farm community is already being used by some motorists as a detour because of the major breakaway on the nearby Gordon Town Road. He mentioned that he is the one who tends to the graveyard, and a retaining wall will be needed since the National Works Agency has cut away some of the road from the burial site in order to build this new road. We need a wall right along here urgently, he said. I don't want them to leave it so. And then if rain falls too hard, it will break away on me right there. When they started working, I showed them the tombs. I know the place is narrow and they can cut off a little more of the land as long as they're willing to build a wall. Walking through the community, it was evident that an attempt to develop what was just a hilly dirt track into a road that will have to accommodate two lanes of vehicular traffic with nothing but a steep drop on the opposite side of the road. The construction team has been cutting it as close into the hillside as they possibly can. So far, this has meant uprooting through trees, encroaching on yard space and even knocking off a doorstep. A big step was here so that you could step up and go inside, but they cut it off to this. This is what he did as he pointed towards the doorway of his son's house. They dug out a tamarind, guinep, and some stinking tow trees. And they lay waste in the gully on the opposite side of the road. And this provided some income for some old women and other community members would pick the fruits to sell further down the street another residence bedroom window now opened up to the mild roadway a dilemma which according to the resident predicts will become even more dreadful with the increased traffic and the road is complete however like comment share and subscribe let me know what you think about all the matters that have been discussed thanks for watching and goodbye